How good is Lana and Eric Kernan actually? How's it going guys? In today's video, we will have an in-depth analysis of Lana and Eric Kernan. Overall, Lana and Eric Kernan is actually not that great of a sync pair. It's okay. And then her grid is also okay. It's nothing like great actually. There's not a lot going on in her grid as well. Lana is a support, a world attack support that is weak to rock. She has decent HP, pretty bad attack and special attack but it doesn't matter she's a support anyways. Very good defense and very good special defense but her speed is terrible, really bad. 127 speed, it's not a good speed, it's really bad. So you definitely need some speed support even though like her passive has propelling strike 9 right but you need you still need speed support or else it's gonna be so slow. For team skills, she has water support, Alora support, trial giver support, free spirit support, and nature lover support. Now for her passive. Passive 1 and passive 2, group fire guard and group water guard. It's actually a reference to Araconid's ability and hidden ability from the main games. It's a reference to water bubble and water absorb. So water bubble is decreased firepower by 50% and then heals 1 out of 5 maximum hit points when hit by water move. So it's a reference which is pretty cool. So basically what group fire guard and group water guard does is your entire team will take less damage from fire type when water type moves. If you're facing an opponent that uses fire water type moves then Lana can be good. It gives the entire team immunity to fire and water types so that is great. Passive 3, Propelling Strike 9. This is a pretty good passive. Mainly because Lana 127 speed is really bad. Really really bad. So Propelling Strike 9 is really good. Essentially what this passive does is it makes Water Gun a free move. Because when you use Water Gun once, you get back the 1 move gauge. And then Leech Life will become a 2 gauge move. So that is pretty good. Not bad. That is something I really like about Lana, right? So. The speed issue is not that great anymore, but like I said, you still need speed support. It's still really slow, 127 is so slow. For her moves, she has Water Gun, 1 move gauge, 24 power at 5 out of 5, a special move, 100% accuracy, and like I said, because of propelling strike 9, right, the Water Gun will become a free move. Really nice. The next up, we have White Guard. White Guard has 1 use, 1 gauge. What it does is the user takes a defensive posture and then the user cannot use anything while in that state and it will prevent all the AoE moves which is which is it can be useful right in Champion Stadium and Legendary Arena where the opponent often uses AoE move. That is really nice. Also I believe Lana is a second white guard user, the first one being Roxanne, right? So that is cool. And I would say Lana is definitely a better White guy user than Roxanne mainly because she has a grid, right? And she has MPR 5 in her grid, so that is really nice. So there's a chance that you can use it twice. So that is very nice. The next move is Lich Life. It's a 3 gauge physical 109 bug type move. 100% accuracy. There's a like a typo here, it's supposed to be physical. It's technically 2 gauge, like I said, because propelling strike 9, right? So you get back 1 gauge after using Lich Life and it restores the user's HP based on the amount of damage dealt. So it's 10% HP recovery, it's still quite costly though, even though it's technically 2 move gauge, still a bit costly. The next move is her trainer move, Carpe Diem, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly, Carpe Diem, I don't know. It has one use, target all allies, it uses up to 3 move gauge and it will plus 4 attack and plus 4 defense if she uses 3 move gauge right and then makes all the sync pairs gradually heal so that is pretty good a pretty good trainer move but it's only one use and she does not get any MPR from her grid so you can max out the entire team's attack and defense so that's not that great actually it's kind of sad but it does gradually heal right so that's a plus and it uses 3 gauge which is quite costly so if you want to run him with a striker, it's preferably if the striker has X attack. Meaning, if you use Carpe Diem once, the striker will have plus 4 attack. And then if the striker uses X attack, then it becomes plus 6. 
So the, her grid, she has Leech Life MGR3, 40% chance to get back Wolf Gage. And then there's Refreshing Rain 1. If you're running a rain team, definitely take this. It's pretty good, right? It gives uh, Araquanet better survivability. There's Capadium Wolf Gage Refresh 3. I don't know if you want to take this, it's only 40% chance and Carpe Diem, this trainer move, you only use it once per battle. So 7 energy for once per battle, it's not that worth it in my opinion. Then she has Unbending as Stalwart. So if you're running a 1 out of 5 Lana, you can just take every single thing right? Just take all of them, you take all of them and then leave Carpe Diem because like I said, it's not that useful. It's only once per battle. So 2 out of 5 grid, there's some decent stuff in there. So first up, we have Catalytic Cure 1, 20% chance to restore HP, the move is successful. This is this can be useful, it's only 20% chance but this can be useful. And then she has Endurance, Endurance, pretty good as well, you can endure the hit. I would recommend taking this if you have like extra energy. Vigilance, Vigilance is a 100% take, you must take Vigilance. If you take Vigilance, then you should give her Enlightenment 9 as her lucky skill. Vigilance prevents critical hit, it's a really great passive. And then we have Porter Gun, MGR3. I mean, you can take this, but you already have a third passive, Propelling Strike 9. So you technically have Water Gun for free, but if you want a 40% chance to get another move gauge, then go ahead, it's not bad. Next up is Rain Gear 1. Rain Gear 1 is good, it reduces damage when rainy, 10% damage. So that is good if you're running a rain team. And then we have Crit Strike 1. This, it, pro you probably don't want this. You're not trying to use Lana as a damage dealer, right? So it's not that useful. Then next up we have Block and Charge 1. Charges the user's move gauge by 1 when it nullifies an opponent's move while in a defensive posture. You probably don't want to use this because yeah, it's 10 energy and at 2 out of 5, you don't even have, you don't even access NPR. So you only use it like once per battle for 10 energy to get one move gauge or maybe two if your opponent uses two AoE moves. Other than that, it's, it's not that great. I would avoid this at, at least at two out of five. So for the build, if you're running a ring build, definitely take ring gear, ring gear one and refreshing ring one. Vigilance, like I said, definitely take this. Then I would recommend catalytic cure one. And that's pretty much it. You have 16 energy left. So yeah, endurance. Yeah, 9 energy left, just take whatever you want. Maybe you want to run a Leech Life build, you can take that or just take Water MGR3. At 3 out of 5, you get access to Tough Cookie. Honestly, you don't need this. However, if you are running a Leech Life build, you might want to consider taking this because you do more damage, meaning you get more healing. So maybe you want this. Okay, Tough Cookie. At plus 6 defense, you get 30% extra damage, so you might want to consider this. HP 12 of 4, no, just don't, just don't take this. 10 energy, it's so much cheaper than tough cookie, right? The less HP the user has remaining, the more it powers up move. It's not that great, it's, it's plus 40%, right? Compared to tough cookie, which is 30%. It's more, but 10 energy, it's expensive. But maybe you can try and run it with endurance, right? So you can tank one more hit, but probably not. I don't think you would need that. Racing Rain 2 quickly charges move gauge when the weather is rainy. I would recommend this because, like I said, like we all know, Lana has a really bad speed, so you can take this. And then we have Carpe Diem MGR9. It's like similar to similarly to MGR3. You only use it once per battle, so technically it becomes two gauge move. But I don't really recommend it because, like I said, it's only once one time for 9 energy, it's not worth it. I would avoid it. It's the bottom left side of the same grid. Generally, I don't think you should need it. Stamina reserve 6, charges from gauge by 6 when the user is in a pinch. Maybe you want this, but probably not. It's energy, maybe you can try it, it's up to you. And then we have white guard MPR5. This, if you're running on white guard build, definitely take this. It's Good, 60% chance to use White Guard a second time. Very nice. And then the last thing is Block and Heal 9. This, maybe. I would prefer this than Block and Charge 1. This is a bit more useful like, if you you recover HP. But if you have if you are planning to take Catalytic Cure 1, I, I would say don't take Block Heal 9. 
because you're gonna get healing anyways. 20% chance. I know it's 20% chance versus like 100% chance, but White Guard, like I said, you use it like once or twice only. But Catalytic Cure, it you have a 20% chance every single time. So this is, I would say, this one is slightly better, even though it's one energy more expensive. So for the build, if you're running a White Guard build, definitely take this Catalytic Cure, one, right, and then Vigilance, a must. So yeah, and then maybe Endurance. You have 12 energy to spare, you can take, maybe you want to run Leech Life or Water Gun, it's up to you. Uh, maybe Tough Cookie, it's really up to you, right? But generally, White Guard, you want to take at least all this stuff. For Rain Build, it's pretty easy, just take all the Rain stuff. You already have Refreshing Rain 1, so you don't need Catalytic Cure 1 anymore because you already have Healing, right? So you don't need that anymore. And then it depends if you're running a Leech Life or Water Gun, if you take if you're running on water gun, then take water gun. If you're running on leech life, then you can do this and then take tough cookie. Exactly zero. Also, one last thing I want to mention is that she, for some reason, Lana does not have master healer in her grid, which is really really odd because typically if you are using like a healing move like Zernius's horn leech, right? She he has like two master healer one, right? And then Lily and Raibombi as well. She has. Master Healer as well, and then Lana for some reason they don't give her Master Healer, which sucks because the healing will be stuck at 10% damage dealt. It's not that great, so that's something that that's one of the reason why Lana is not that great. Even though like she, even though like her move gauge will become two because of Propelling Strike nine, but still it's not enough healing. I mean you have Rain Gear one and Catalytic Gear one, but more healing will be even better, right? So should you summon Lana and Araconid? Honestly, it's a flat up no. Don't summon for him, unless you're a Lana fan. Mainly because she's a spotlight scout, meaning after her scout banner ends, then she will be in a regular pool. You can just wait until it's over, wait until July and then you can get her for free. Not free, but you can get her by chance or something. And on top of that, she's not that great of a unit. She's okay. She can definitely be a really good tank, really really good tank, but her speed, her speed, just bad, it's really bad. So yeah, it's a no, don't summon for her unless you're a Lana fan. So this is it for the video, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.